very good evening to you and thank you for joining us on Nationwide Live on the network service of the NTA. I am Ifoma Ojinta. <laughs> Now, one year into President Muhammad Buhari's second term in office has been characterized by actions mostly bold and visionary. Information and Culture Minister Lai Mohammed said this at a media briefing to mark the first anniversary of the second term of President Muhammad Buhari in office. Describing the past one year as a momentous one for Nigeria, Lai Mohammed said President Muhammad Buhari has said and consistently provided the leadership that has now put Nigeria on an irreversible path to sustainable development, stressing that never in the history of Nigeria have such positive steps been taken in such a short period, beginning with power, water, border drill code named Exercise Swift response as well as the federal government's visa on arrival policy. On infrastructure, Lai Mohammed said there are over 50 projects spread across the 26 states of the Federation and all are ongoing steadily. The fight against corruption has equally yielded positive results with over 81 billion naira worth recovered and 1,270 convictions by ICPC and EFCC. Nigeria, through some of these policies, has intensified its security to guarantee food sufficiency. The present administration has also matched action with words in the area of job creation. With this scorecard, Lai Mohammed says the stage is now set for the implementation of the greatest agricultural revolution in the history of the country. Nigeria's search for solutions in power and road infrastructure for overall growth of economic and social sectors is at the center of the federal government's priority areas in the five years of the Buhari presidency, overcoming impediments and implementing relevant initiatives. In this special report, Joshua Ojito examines the journey so far. From the small, medium and large-scale enterprises, as well as to domestic needs, it is the quality of electricity supply that makes the difference in achieving the desired economic growth and development. The light is better than before. Like other sectors with activities, electricity is delivered with all its value chain of gas, generation, transmission and distribution, working seamlessly as well as stakeholders through teamwork to deliver on mandates. Our next level movement in this uh, power sector is to make sure that all these projects have been completed. We are going around to complete the project and also to commission the project before the end of this term. To ensure diversification of energy sources, the long-standing dispute which kept Mambila Power Project on the drawing board has been resolved to deliver life-changing power infrastructure and huge employment opportunities. This just signifies the fact that uh, we are matching words with action. Similarly, Kashimbila and Dadinkoa hydropower projects are awaiting inauguration as work on Zungeru project is progressing. There are many projects started by this administration from the scratch that have continued to receive funding within limits of available resources, like Lafia Transmission Station nearing completion. In the period under review, transmission projects remain key element of revamping the fortunes of power sector to ensure technical losses become a thing of the past. Government is exploring partnership to rebound poor networks along the supply chain by bringing German-based Siemens for infrastructure realignment, which key players say will address the challenge of revenue losses in the sector. A solution to Nigeria's power sector is gradually being found. Government has tried. In the larger context, the Buhari administration made commitment amounted to 1.3 trillion naira since it came on board to address revenue shortfall and ensure payments are made to gas suppliers as at when due. 
Similarly, government also introduced the Willing Buyer, Willing Seller initiative, designed to enable consumers take electricity supply directly from generation companies to their homes and businesses. Walking through the Nigerian Electricity Regulatory Commission, the issue of meter access to customers received attention with orders to distribution companies to ensure availability. So we're coming up what you call capping. We will cap what you should pay for the power you use and treat you well. To further energize the economy and ensure educational development, many power sector agencies, including Rural Electrification Agency and National Integrated Power Project, have delivered solar power infrastructure to markets, schools and homes across the country where the national grid cannot reach. On road infrastructure, federal government launched the Presidential Infrastructure Development Fund under the management of the Nigerian Sovereign Investment Authority with $650 million to fund three critical road projects of Second Niger Bridge, Lagos Ibadan Expressway, and the Abuja Kaduna Zaria Kano Expressway. There are other 25 road projects being funded by the Sukuk bonds across the country with work near completion in Abuja. Joshua Ojito, NTA News. And to shed more light on the developmental strides in the last five years, we have in the studio Ajuri Ngilali, the Senior Special Assistant to the President on Public Affairs. You are welcome to Nationwide. Thank you for having me. Now, five years of the Buhari administration, how has the journey been so far? Well, there's no doubt about the fact that uh, the, the president has essentially made a five-course meal with a very bare cupboard. Uh, I mean, when you look at the fact that the president has dealt with uh, consistently depressed oil and gas prices internationally, and he has been able to do uh, with halved revenues uh, what previous administrations uh, could not do with double the revenues. And I think when you look at the fact that, uh, look at the numbers, I mean, uh, in, in terms of agriculture, we were doing uh, by, before 2015, uh, approximately Approximately $3 billion in rice imports every single year. We've been able to, uh, more or less, the president has been able to substitute that with locally produced rice. That's just one commodity, sugar, wheat, uh, fish, etc. Uh, and we've been able to now take those savings and apply those to budget support and other very critical areas as well as infrastructural development. Uh, if you look at the fact that we have gotten to a point where uh, in the last five years, uh, 20 different uh, uh, fertilizer blending plants have been uh, put in, uh, into into uh, effect obviously in terms of reconstruction and new construction uh, 10 different rice mills across the country have been put together all of this uh, has gone uh, to uh, the, the fact that the president is very committed to diversifying the nation's economy not with words but with action uh, and we've also seen uh, how uh, important it was for uh, the CBN to be able to make very critical interventions under the leadership of the president to say we're going to make sure that we offer low interest facilities to even the most vulnerable uh, uh, farmers, those who don't have access to much, they're able to get uh, access to those facilities. And we've seen the Anchor Borrowers Program impact millions of farmers in terms of their access to liquidity uh, and their ability to get seedlings. Uh, and uh, of course, fertilizers have been cut in half, etc. So that's just agriculture. I think you look at infrastructure. Uh, no one can dispute uh, what has happened over the last five years when you look at the Lagos Ibadan Expressway, when you look at the fact that Lagos Ibadan Railway in 2017 did not exist. Now we have a high speed rail line that's been completed all the way from Iju through Abeokuta all the way into Ibadan and uh, now people are taking free rides so uh, that's just in the west you look at the east you have the second Niger bridge you look at the south you have for the first time in our nation's history the Boni Bodo road which is going to link the NLNG uh, in Boni Island to the mainland so that we can have an, uh, an effective facilitation of goods uh, movement of gas products across the country as we diversify the economy away from just crude oil all of these things have been done in such a short period of time okay. with half the revenues and I think the no. president deserves a lot of credit for that, of course. Now, just as you have um, pointed out, you know, major discussions mm -hmm. now are dominated by commendations on developmental strategy, which you have right. mentioned quite um, a lot, you know, to include economy and social investment, mm -hmm. revamped agriculture and security. Now, how was Nigeria able to achieve all this? 
Well, a lot of it was, uh, of course, uh, cutting the massive corruption that was going on before President Mohamedou Buhari took office. I think when you look at, for just for example, look at the government-owned enterprises, the Nigerian Customs Service, that uh, one trillion naira that is now being remitted to the Federation account was being stolen from inside of the customs before this administration took office. The same kind of story was going on in NPA, NIMASA, and all of these government-owned enterprises. And so it's not a surprise that uh, because the president uh, has taken tangible steps to fight corruption in this country, we've been able to utilize the, the very scarce resources available to be able to uh, create a situation where we now have 15 million beneficiaries of the unprecedented social investment programs uh, of Mr. President, in addition to all of the infrastructure, in addition to all of the diversification into agriculture and other sectors uh, that I've mentioned. But I think it is really essential when we talk about security that we have to remember where we were in 2015. Yes, we still have challenges. Yes, we're still uh, making progress against those challenges. But we're not having bombs going off in Abuja and various urban centers around the country at will. We have not had a single one go off in Abuja since Mr. President took office. That is a clear testament uh, to uh, the, the, the efforts made uh, by the president. And that's not even including within the military. Uh, many, I think this gets downplayed a lot, how we have finally been able to move from importing arms, uh, armed personnel carriers and all of these different things to now producing them locally uh, with our own people, uh, with our own raw materials. We're creating small arms, we're creating our own ar armored personnel carriers, etc. So, so many things have gone on. I would okay. need hours to talk about what the president has done in five years. Now, where, where do you see Nigeria in the next two years? Well, there's, there's no doubt that uh, with this trajectory, uh, we're very much on course, especially as we get into the implementation phase of the Economic Sustainability Plan. Uh, we're definitely on course to meet Mr. President's target of uh, uplifting 100 million Nigerians out of poverty uh, within 10 years. Uh, that's, of course, 2029. 20, uh, uh, you look at the Siemens deal. As of this last uh, year, the one year that uh, of the second term, look at what has happened. The amendment of the deep offshore production sharing contract was amended, earning Nigeria $1.5 billion in annual revenue that was not there before. You look at the uh, bringing in the finance bill uh, to, uh, uh, the, uh, to abet the, regulariz the regularization of the uh, budget calendar from now to January to December, as we've always wanted. And then the last thing I would just say is, in terms of restructuring, even the effort to ensure that there's local government autonomy, June 1st, 2019, uh, we put in, uh, the president put in place the NFIU guidelines that now sees local governments getting their funds directly from source instead of the state governors taking their money. And then the last thing, just a few days ago, the, the president operationalized uh, uh, financial autonomy for state judiciaries and state legislatures. All of these things uh, have been done in a year. So uh, the president is doing very well. I think Nigerians are appreciative of his efforts. And we just have to continue to sensitize our people and make sure that they get the truth about what Mr. President is doing for them. Thank you very much, uh, Anjuri Gilali, Senior Special Assistant to President Buhari on Public Affairs. It's been a pleasure having you here today. Always a privilege. Thank you. Thank you very much. Now, five years after the Buhari administration has indeed recorded achievements even in the face of daunting challenges, and notable among these are the agriculture and transport sector. Guests on Good Morning Nigeria while discussing five years of the Buhari administration say the country, though battling with some challenges, is steadfast in delivering on the promise of change and the next level agenda. Daniel Aderi tells us more. The Buhari-led administration has constantly been put under scrutiny for almost every reason. But guests on Good Morning Nigeria say the administration, contrary to popular belief, is dedicated to governance and delivering the dividend of democracy across all sectors of the country. The president is satisfied that the resources, reduced as they are, they are being, they are being pushed into areas that the nation needs the most. And this is, look, this country cannot achieve national development. We cannot grow our economy without major investments in infrastructure. And we've got to have them, power, roads, the rail lines, and the airports, and all of these things that are going on. His problem-solving attitude uh, is something that we can refer to as Buhari style of leadership. So uh, for me, it is something that any student of power any student of governance that is desirous about bringing change to um, his people or to our people, to the nation, should imbibe. The Minister for Transport, Chibike Rotimi Amechi, while highlighting the landmark successes recorded in the transport sector, noted that despite the ravaging effect of COVID-19, the President remains resolute in delivering on his campaign promises of adequate infrastructure and improved transport, and as such, 
has called for major projects in the transport sector to continue and must be delivered in time for public benefit. What the, what the president means by that instruction is that whether you like it or not, COVID seems to have come to... If we continue to say we are waiting for COVID, we may be waiting to, for COVID, COVID until 2023. That's the point he's making in, in asking me to return to site. And he didn't say just return to site. He said to Mr. of Finance, release to the money I asked to release to Amici, and they've released $218 million. You, you, you get the point? <laughs> yes, the country is broke. But because of his emphasis on infrastructure, he has said, release money to um, uh, the Minister for Transport. Minister for Transport, go back to site. He didn't end there. He said, brief me in September what you have done between now and September. They, however, called on Nigerians to be patient with the government, but more support its cause of stamping out corruption and an economy that is non-dependent on oil. In Abuja, Daniel Adirie, NT News. Meanwhile, Nigeria has been recording a steady and rapid growth in the agricultural sector of the economy as a result of the green alternative policy being implemented by the federal government in the past five years. Agricultural economists are of the views that the country would have been in major food crisis if not for the policies and programs of the APC-led administration. In this report, Musa Baba Aliu takes a look at the journey to food security and self-sufficiency. So far. It has been five years now that the federal government, under the leadership of President Muhammadu Buhari, embarked on a journey. The dream is to take Nigeria out of the list of food dependent nations to a wealthy and food secured country. Let's eat what we produce has been the slogan of the administration. The administration came on board at a time when revenues from oil and gas dropped to less than $30 a barrel thereby affecting the socioeconomic growth and well-being of the country. To look for other source of income therefore became imperative and the government turned attention to agriculture. We thank God for the administration of um, Mohammed Buhari that we are getting back into agriculture and we hope that in the next few years agriculture will take the front seats once again. The first step taken in achieving these goals is identification of major challenges that made the country to be over dependent on importation of what can be produced locally. These challenges include lack of access as well as high cost of farming inputs and farmers' inability to get financial support to expand and add value to their produce. We have to deal with reducing the import burden of food, which is almost $22 billion a year. To tackle these challenges, the government introduced the Anchor Borrowers Program, which was launched by President Mahmoudou Buhari. The Central Bank of Nigeria set aside 40 billion naira for rice and wheat farming in an Anchor Borrowers Program. A farmer will, give, will be given all the necessary input required to grow wheat. And at the end of the harvest, he's going to pay back with the produce at the prevailing market price. The latest figures released by the Central Bank of Nigeria indicated that more than 1.5 million smallholder farmers are cultivating over 1.4 million hectares of land under the Anko Borowas program. It is important for us to appreciate a government that brings about policies that are productive, that are progressive, that are positive, that are proactive. Between 2016 and 2019, more than 10 new rice mills came on stream in Nigeria. Many of the existing mills have expanded their capacity. Several new ones are under construction. In Zampara State, there was this old man. He plants rice three times a year, and he got about 11 metric tons per hectare. Farmers don't need to pay for the insurance separately. They don't pay premium separately. The price of the insurance is packaged and bundled into the cost of the fertilizer. This has attracted more than a billion dollars of private sector investments in the production of rice, wheat, sugar, poultry, animal feed, fertilizers, among other produce since 2015. In Abuja, Musa Baba Aliyu, NTA News. And as the rainy season sets in, 11,250 maize farmers from Adamawa State have received farming inputs under the federal government anchor borrowers program for the 2020 wet season farming. Simon Asha from Yola reports that the flag off of the program was performed in strict compliance with COVID-19 protocols. Increase in population, farmers' headers clashes, flood 
and the effect of COVID-19 pandemic in the country, empowering farmers with farming inputs becomes imperative to ensure food security and sustain economic growth. Therefore, the flag of, of the West Season Federal Government and co borrowers program for most farmers in other state is said to be timely to boost food production. And we pray this farming season will be the best of all farming time that we've gotten. <laughs> The chairman, Mace Farmers Association of Nigeria, Adam Hastead, Ilyasu Mazu, says the program to assist small scale farmers have access to credit facility so as to encourage them in agricultural production. In this season, wet season program, about 11,250 farmers will be empowered. Each farmer was given bags of maize seedlings, fertilizers, and insecticides among other farming inputs. In Yola, Simon Asher, NT News. Let's take a break to bring you some messages nationwide in a moment to stay. I wish to once again commend the frontline workers across the country who, on a daily basis, risk everything to ensure we win this fight. For those who got infected in the line of duty, rest assured that government will do all it takes to support you and your families during this exceedingly difficult period. I will also take this opportunity to assure you all that your safety, well-being, and welfare remains paramount to our government. I am using this opportunity to express our deepest condolences to the families of all Nigerians that have lost their loved ones as a result of the COVID-19 pandemic. This is our collective loss and we share your grief. As women, we get our homes. Coronavirus COVID-19 is real. Wash your hands with soap and water regularly. Use the hand sanitizer always. Maintain social distance and avoid crowded places. Disinfect contact surfaces at intervals. We have fixed masks if you must go out. Share faith, not fear. Symptoms of COVID-19 are headache, fever, sore throat and dry cough. Difficulty in breathing. If you have this, please seek medical help immediately. COVID-19 is real. Stay safe. This, this message is from the Women Wing of Christian Association of Nigeria. What we die. Nigerians, let us take responsibility. Stay healthy, stay safe, and curb the spread of the virus. Take responsibility. The coronavirus spreads from one person to another. Let us avoid crowd gathering of any kind for any reason. Take responsibility. Avoid traveling from one state to another during these lockdown restrictions. Obey all the rules that are put in place. Take responsibility. Stop spreading fake news and unverified reports about the coronavirus. There is no known cure for COVID-19. Take responsibility. Observe all the measures that can help stop the spread of the virus. Together, we can do this, but only if we take responsibility. This message is brought to you by the Nigerian Television Authority, NTA, Africa's largest television network. We have observed the lockdown. We have practiced the measures in order to curb the spread of the virus, but we can do better. The coronavirus spread is increasing daily and only together can we cut down the numbers and defeat the spread of the virus. Remember, COVID-19 is not a death sentence and a recovered patient cannot spread the disease. Do not stigmatize. Do not hesitate to report any case or if you have come in contact with anybody that has been infected with COVID-19. If you have cough and fever, please stay at home and call your state hotline. Find state numbers at www.covid19.ncdc.gov.ng. Remember, it is for your own good and for the good of every Nigerian. Let us do better and defeat the virus. Together, 
We can do this. This message is brought to you by the Nigerian Television Authority, NTA, Africa's largest television network. Thanks for staying tuned. It's now time to join Ruth in Lagos for more on Nationwide. Hello, Ruth. Hello, Ijoma. Good to see you. Acquisition of 44 new train coaches and eight diesel multiple units, revival of the Wari Itape rail line, and completion of track construction along the Lagos Ibadan corridor are some of the crucial intervention of the federal government in the rail subsector. As the administration of President Muhammadu Buhari marks its fifth year in the saddle, the gains of this massive investment are already visible with industrial hub gradually springing up around these axes. Michael Olale reports. The blowing of the horn indicating that indeed the rail is fully back in Nigeria and has come to stay. This is Iju a suburb in Lagos State. The vibrancy around here was inspired by the commencement of train operations and tricyclists like Timi Tokwashini Obola are gainfully employed and profiting from the life-changing initiative of the federal government. Apart from the passengers, it will move fuel, move cow, and uh, move cars. The tenacity to make the journey to Ibadan shorter informed the massive procurement of these diesel multiple units, coaches, locomotives and motor cars between March and April in anticipation of traffic surge. Ten coaches to worry Tape and the remaining 24 will be used for the Lagos Ibadan operation. And at the same time we are expecting over 280 wagons of various types. Aside completing the lane of tracks, Train stations along the corridor are giving an insight into the magnitude of trade and commerce expected to flow along this axis, while the inauguration of a wagon assembly plant was a game changer in the quest to establish a sustainable mechanism. We are also looking at a situation where the narrow gauge on the eastern line is brought back fully, talking about reducing the curves the, and reducing the gradient. We need to to, to bring in the private sector. We can do it. Government cannot do it alone. When private sector comes in, it will unlock the investment opportunity there. It will create job. It will enhance government any capacity. And at the end of it, we end up putting Nigeria economy in the hands of Nigeria. With this huge investment and landmark achievements, it is a statement of fact that the race sector is the shining star among the areas of successes recorded by the administration of President Muhammad Buhari and feelers from respondents is that of hope that with the level of achievements in the race sector in the past five years, the master plan of the present administration to network all the geopolitical zones will be a reality. In Lagos, Michael Olale, NT News. Prior to the present administration, the deplorable nature of federal roads and bridges in Lagos seemed like a permanent future due to neglect and poor maintenance culture. In the last five years, however, the federal government has aggressively embarked on the rehabilitation and reconstruction of these critical infrastructure. Dr. Oguemi has the report. There is a popular saying among Nigerians that no one came to Lagos to count bridges. Simply put, most people migrated to Lagos to make a better living. The subject of bridges in this cliché is because they are among structures that make transportation easier and add to the aesthetics of the mega city. Lagos, which was Nigeria's former capital, has 70 federal roads and 31 bridges, several of which have either undergone or still undergoing rehabilitation in the last five years. Before, when you see this road, the big accident here, but when I talk to the president, they come here to come and you know to come and repair this this place. God bless the government. Fatima Usman is a street sweeper. She says her job is easier 
as traffic situation has improved as the roads get better. We have a major project along Lagos Badagi Road. That's between Iyanagule and Agbara. Serious work is going on there, a complete rehabilitation of that road. And then we also have along Apapa Oshodi Oroshoki to Ojota. Then, of course, Lagos Ibado is there. And then the truck park is there. Lagos Badagri, a section of it from Agbara to Badagri. Work is ongoing on all those sections. Going forward, the attention of the Federal Ministry of Works has again been drawn to rumors that part of the Third Mainland Bridge has opened up the Federal Controller of Works in Lagos, however, visited the bridge and reacts. Disregard that news. Please, the road is safe, the bridge is safe, very comfortable to ride on. The federal government has also laid to rest issues of project delays due to challenges of funding. The Lagos Ibadan Expressway with the launch of the Presidential Infrastructure Development Fund, which was approved in May 2018, is one of such projects. In Lagos, Dotun Okunyemi, NTA News. The Lagos state government has increased its testing for COVID-19 to 2,000 per day. The Commissioner for Health, Professor Akin Abayomi, at a media briefing to commemorate the one-year anniversary of Governor Babajide Sanwolu in office, stressed the importance of primary health care. Nosa Osila reports. The news briefing, which also featured other commissioners, is an annual stock-taking event for the state government and an avenue for Lagos residents to get full knowledge of development projects the state intends to embark upon in the next 12 months. Professor Abayomi said 50 specialized intensive care providers have been engaged to attend to coronavirus patients in the state as there has been a recent increase in the number of patients requiring such services. Uh, human resources for health, information systems, access to medicines, health financing and service delivery. And overall, these are all geared towards the delivery of responsiveness, sound health systems, social and financial protection against threats, and improved efficiency in total around the healthcare delivery. Professor Abayomi stated that the current administration also improved management and reduction of HIV AIDS and other infectious diseases while reproductive health and malaria prevention programs also received a boost. We've digitized the state's response to COVID-19. On his part, the Commissioner for Transportation, Dr. Frederick Oladendi, who highlighted various people-oriented projects cutting across road and water transportation, announced that the Oshodi Abulegba Bus Rapid Transit would commence operation in July, while the first phase of what he called the Last Mile Bus Network would take off soon in Lagos, Nusa. Osula, NTA News. And that's it from here. It's back to Ifoma in Abuja. Thank you very much, Ruth. The Nigeria Center for Disease Control, NCDC, has reported 182 new cases of COVID-19 in Nigeria. Lagos has 111 cases, FCT 16, Akwai Bomb 10 and Oyo 8 cases. Others are Kaduna and Delta 6 each, Rivers 5, Ogun and Ebony 4 each, while Kanu has 3 more confirmed cases. Plateau, Gombe and Kwara have 2 cases each, while Kebi, Bochi and Bornu have 1 case each. There are now 8,915 confirmed cases of COVID-19 in Nigeria. 2,592 cases have been discharged with 259 deaths recorded so far. And Abu Bakr in Medjugorje is next on the line for Nationwide. Over to you, Abu Bakr. Good to see you, Ifoma, and thank you for joining us in Medjugorje. 
National Directorate of Employment, NDE, in collaboration with Future Assured Project, have flocked off production of 20,000 safety face masks as part of efforts to complement the Borno State COVID-19 high-powered response team in curbing the spread of dreaded coronavirus pandemic in the state. The face masks are being produced by NDE-trained tailors. Yagum Subukar reports. The production of these 20,000 safety face masks by National Directorate of Employment in collaboration with Future Assured Project is ongoing in eight states of the Federation with the aim of supporting government in the fight against COVID-19. About 60 NDE trainees were engaged in the production of the face masks, which according to the tailors has boosted their economic empowerment. Our people, they are in very critical situation. But because of this program, most of them see them here. They are very happy with this work. Flagging of the commencement of production, Secretary of State COVID-19 Committee, represented by Commissioner for Women Affairs, Zoe Rogambu, commended NDE for the initiative assuring to distribute the free face marks to vulnerable members of the society once they are ready. By the time you distribute it to 20,000 people of Borno State, it will go a long way. Director General NDE Dr. Nasiru Mohammed Laden in a message disclosed that the directorate saw the need to assist government with face masks to contain the spread of the pandemic. We are using cotton fabric that can be easily maintained. We train them, we uh, set them up and they are now producing this. State Commissioner for Science and Technology represented encouraged the tailors to use their skills in contributing their quota towards the development of the state. The production of these 20,000 face masks by NDE trainees will not only assist in curbing the spread of the pandemic, but also create economic empowerment to the over 60 tailors engaged in the production of the face masks. In Medugri, Yagum Subukar, Thanks, Borno State Governor Professor Babagana Umara Zulum had in view of the ravaging coronavirus pandemic and the need to decongest custodial centers granted pardon to 93 inmates in three custodial centers across the state. The released persons who were conveyed to their homes across the state gained their freedom following a recommendation by the Borno State Council on Prerogative of Mercy. Paul Kudevana reports. Applications for clemency to 96 inmates due to the COVID-19 were compiled by the Bano State Controller of Correctional Service and received by the State Advisory Council on Prerogative of Mercy, whereas 93 were certified fit for the state pardon. The 93 were considered based on old age, terminal sickness, low risk offenders, minor offenders, and those that had no pending case, as well as those on compassionate ground. But no state controller of correctional service, Gimba Manu Dambulwa said, the inmates who gained their freedom were from the maximum and medium security custodial centers in Meduguri and the medium center in Butang, and were taken home by the officials of the centers upon the payment of stipend by the Borno State Government. We we'll make sure that out of the whole 93, everybody is taken back to his house under the lockdown. The judiciary, the Attorney General and Commissioner for Justice, they are doing whatever they can to see that the prison, there is no congestion. But no State Commissioner for Justice and Attorney General, Barista Kakashe Wilewan says, although the three custodial centers have no case of congestion, government complied as part of a commitment to the prevention of spread of COVID-19. Prior to the grant of amnesty and pardon to the inmates who have just released, there exist in the facilities 576 vacancies. So this goes to show that we have no congestion in our correctional facilities. The state pardon for the 93 convicted persons was a product of a transparent and joint legal review by the Bano State Government, Judiciary and the Nigeria Police in Meduguri. Paul and Kujivana, NTA News. You're on to Nationwide on the Nigerian Television Authority. Time now to return to Ifoma in Abuja for more stories. Do enjoy the rest of the day. Thank you, Abubakar. Now, the Jigawa State COVID-19 Task Force begins test run of the laboratory for suspected cases. Governor Mohamed Badaru Abubakar says the laboratory is awaiting accreditation by the Nigeria Center for Disease Control and CDC. Mohamed Musa Askira reports. 
The molecular laboratory, according to Governor Mohammed Badura Abubakar, when accredited by the NCDC, will reduce the stress of sending test samples to faraway places and its attendant delay in receiving the test results. Having installed all the necessary facilities for testing COVID-19 patients and other contagious diseases, the molecular laboratory, according to the governor, has been test running its functionality since Monday as it awaits the accreditation of the NCDC. Speaking on the progress made so far in the fight against the novel coronavirus, Governor Mohamed Badura Abubakar stated, out of 241 confirmed cases of COVID-19 in Jigao State, 151 patients have been cured and discharged, representing 51% of the state's total infection so far. You will all agree with me that this fight must continue unabated until we reach our destination, a COVID-free Jiga state. While commending the frontline health workers in the state for their relentless efforts, Governor Mohamed Badura Bobokan appealed to residents in the state not to stigmatize against the cured patients of the disease. From Dute, Mohamed Musaskira. NTN News. We now go to Port Harcourt and the Barbary is standing by. And welcome to Port Harcourt. Following the alleged mysterious deaths recorded in Boni Kingdom, the River State Government has sent medical team to the island to ascertain the cause of the deaths. Robin Sindra Taide has the situation report. Reports indicate that in the last two weeks, not fewer than 11 persons have lost their lives to a strange ailment in Bonnie Kingdom. Loss of smell, taste, and breathing difficulties among the victims have heightened the suspicion by experts that the victims might have died from complications arising from COVID-19, a situation that prompted the state government to send medical team to unravel the case. Our team of medical personnel led by Commissioner of Health have visited Bonnie Island and collected samples for suspected cases for analysis and immediate intervention should the results indicate the outbreak of the virus in the area. Some stakeholders say the situation may not be unconnected to air and water pollution caused by gas leakage or the consumption of dead fish and sea whale in the island last month. There is even complaints about the water now, the portable water that uh, was provided by uh, the LNG is no longer a good quality water. First of all, color has changed. Taste has also changed. Nozer has stated the cause of dead fish could be the emptying to the dead creeks and waters of uh, solid waste. But what about sludges? What about wastewater? What about other effluent for the industries and companies along the coastlines of these communities? While the people await the outcome of the investigations, Experts have advised residents to stay safe. In Port Harcourt, Robinson, Derateide, NTA News. Though displaced from their ancestral homes and currently taking refuge in Nigeria, the Cameroonian refugees in Cross River State have continued to benefit from the Nigerian government, who is now relenting in playing the Big Brother's role. The recent being the provision of personal protective equipment, PPE, to over 20,000 refugees in a Diagom community in Ogoja, local government area of Cross River. Umo Basi Edet reports. Cameroonian refugees may not be frontline workers, but equipping them with PPEs has become necessary to protect and keep them safe from the ravaging coronavirus pandemic. This is not far-fetched because they constitute a vulnerable group in need of support to cushion the effect of the pandemic. If you are not alive, you will not be able to eat, of course. So we came here with some palliatives for them. We are in the COVID-19 pandemics, so this is a, a world phenomenon which requires and every individual as a world citizen uh, should have a protective equipment as we move around. The beneficiary had this to say. God should bless the, uh, the people who gave to me. No smart, when they give out, we should cover our nose because of coronavirus. The UN have found it necessary for them to establish the water project to ease the life of the people of the community. Beyond the palliatives, Efforts are also underway to introduce these refugees to agriculture through the acquisition of several hectares of land for cultivation. From Ogoja local government area of Cross River State, Umo Basidate, NT News. And that does it from Port Harcourt. Nationwide will continue right after the break.
Good evening. As a strong immune system increases the chances of victims surviving COVID-19, a corruption-free society creates opportunities for citizens to thrive and prosper. Build your immunity. Stop corruption now. Report all acts of corruption to ICPC on this toll-free number. 0800-2255-4272. This message is brought to you by ICPC and NTA. This is a very important message. Operation, wear, wear your mask. Especially for people who are done old. No forget, your body no tranga like before. You know even tranga like your children or your grandchildren. So therefore, always wear your mask for this pandemic period. No they to receive visitors so even if not your grandchildren. Make extra mask where you go fit wash. Make like two and that's your number one. And if they come out for house, wear your mask always. And if you come back, wash your hand with soap and running water. To avoid coronavirus, make you for live long for your children and your grandchildren. No forget, oppression, wear, wear your mask, especially for people who are done old. Protect me, I protect you. In a coalition of societies for the right of older persons in Nigeria, cost dropping, join body with National Orientation Agency, NOA. Bring on this message. <laughs> You're welcome back. Governor Abdullahi Umar Ganduji says Kano State is witnessing a decline in the spread of COVID-19. Speaking during a periodic media briefing on the COVID-19 response, the governor attributed the decline to the deployment of additional strategies in containing community transmission of the virus. Abdullahi Mustafa has the details. At the initial stage of the COVID-19 response in Kanu, the state battled with multiple daily reported cases and death from the viral disease. This informed the deployment of additional measures by the state government, increased awareness, establishment of additional isolation facilities, testing and sample collection centers were among such measures. So far, Governor Abdullah Umar Ganduja stated the outcome is cheering. We are witnessing a decline in the spread of this disease in Kano State. And also, we are witnessing people accepting that the disease is a reality. Dr. Ganduji, however, stressed that use of face mask must be enforced to achieve better results. He also insisted that the Almajiri system must be remodeled not only with regards containing community transmission, but to comply with the free and compulsory education policy of the state government. There were presentations from members of the technical response team and the state task force on COVID-19. In Kano, Abdullahi Mustafa, NTA News. We now go to Sokoto and Abdurrahman is our guide. If, hello, Ifema, and welcome to Sokoto. As the world struggles under the weight of the coronavirus pandemic, the federal and Sokoto state governments are worried by the weight of insecurity in some parts of Sokoto state, particularly the unfortunate attack by bandits, which claimed many lives in Sabambirino local government area. To tackle the issues, President Muhammad Buhari is to meet with Sokoto state governor. Governor Amin Waziri Tambo said this while on a condolence visit to the area. Dr. Abdullahi reports. Hundreds of bandits attacked the Garki, Dang Adwa, Kozali, Katuma, and the Masawa communities of Sabon Birni local government on Wednesday, killing many people. It was the worst attack experienced by the communities in recent years. The affected communities are within a distance of three kilometers in the outskirts of Savonbirni town, the headquarters of the local government. The bandits, according to reports, took advantage of the absence of the joint security operatives who were at Burkusuma community, about 60 kilometers away from Savonbirni town, containing a similar attack. 
condoling the families and the people of the area, Governor Tampwell said he had briefed the president who scheduled a meeting to discuss the matter. He directed the state relief agency to ensure prompt response with relief materials to the affected communities, praying for the repose of the departed souls, advising people not to take the laws into their hands. Sultan Muhammad Sa'ad Abu Bakr expressed worry over the unfortunate massacre of innocent citizens, asking them to take it as a destiny from Allah and engage in consistent prayer for his protection against all evils. The sole administrator of the local government council, Abdul Qadir Jilani Dambuga, and the district head, Isa Muhammad Bawa, said they are in a sad mood as the attack left 74 people dead and thanked the governor and the sultan for their concern. Armed banditry has continued to be common in some rural communities of Sakwata State. In Sakwatu, Dalat Abdullahi, NTA News. Worried by the incessant attacks on villages in eight local government areas of Sokoto State, coalition of concerned Sokoto citizens on security situation have called for proactive measures to end banditry attacks in the areas. They made the call at a press conference held at NUJ Press Center, Sokoto. Shio Muhammad Dati completes the report. Over the years, Sokoto State was known for peace and hospitality. However, the peaceful nature is gradually shifting as a result of bandits' attack. Eastern part of the state that comprises of eight local governments have recently been experiencing banditry attacks. This necessitated the call by the Coalition of Concerned Sokoto Citizens to appeal to fair and state governments to urgently come to the aid of the people of Sokoto State, especially those experiencing the attacks. According to the coalition, the worst hit by the banditry attack is our many local government where the bandits offered in broad daylight. Within the first quarter of the year 2020, over 20 attacks were recorded in Sawamrini alone. The recent attack in the local government happened on 27th of May 2020, where more than 70 people were killed. Each of the 11 wards in Sawamrini local government has part of it under the total control of bandits whose permission and consent the villagers need to conduct wedding or naming ceremonies or to even have a wedding market day. The concerned citizens called on the federal and state governments to immediately provide palliatives to the victims of the attacks. In Sakoto, Shah Muhammad Dati, NTA News. That's it from here. Ifoma is back to you in Abuja. Thank you, Abdul Rahman. And up next is Sports with Tamara Ebiwe.